warriors and people that love peace and liberty worldwide. Maximum alert. Alex Jones here coming to you from my home. I knew this was big two days ago when they said they foiled the Iranian plot to blow up the uh, Saudi embassy in D.C. and assassinate people, claiming that it was Mexican drug cartels. I knew that that was a cover for the Fast and Furious subpoenas that they knew were imminent the next day uh, or yesterday. Since then, Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, who you better believe speaks for some of the better elements of the Pentagon uh, and of the ruling elite of this country, uh, he's reported in part of very important think tanks, uh, heavily involved in trying to kill bin Laden, has blown the whistle on a lot of 9-11 stuff, the Super Congress. When he basically is un unleashed to come out and say something, you know it's important. Paul Watson's article... Uh, is up at Infowars.com. FBI insider, Obama administration, likely manufactured dubious terror plot. Uh, and Schaefer talked to a high-level FBI agent with clearances who knows that it's not in the system, that there was not a plot. Repeat, not a plot. Then, and again, people think I'm quick. I'm not really quick. A lot of this was hiding in plain view. I knew there'd be some false flag or buildup for war, uh, as the smokescreen for Obama's approval rating plunging, the Fast and Furious coming out, the Democrats calling for him not to run. And I said last week, if they don't start pulling a new war or false flag, Obama will be toast in one month. Then I discovered that uh, a member of my family who's an Army officer is being sent to Kuwait and was very tight-lipped. Uh, and then I made some other calls and confirmed it's a green light attack. Israeli strike on Iran, repeat, within two weeks T-minus two weeks. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week. But the main forces and uh, logistics uh, forces for a U.S. backstrike of the Israelis is building up in Kuwait uh, and surrounding areas right now. Uh, this is an absolute mega alert. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, um, it could not be any more hardcore. Then my phone rings ten times in a row until I jumped off the treadmill this morning and went over and got it. Dr. Steve Pachinik. And, uh, you know, he basically, uh, we, we know he's establishment, he's run overthrows of major governments, and we know he represents an element of the Pentagon. He said, you know the Pentagon knows there's going to be a strike. The bunker busters have been delivered to Israel. We don't want this. That's why Schaefer's gone public. And he basically put his cards on the table as if any of us needed him to and uh, just said, you know, I, well, he's coming on later. We'll see what he says. The point is, he's been talking to a lot of people in current government intelligence and the Pentagon, and he said, it's on. Uh, the government, uh, again, I would add, could stage terror attacks now and blame it on Iran. It is on. It is on. It is on. They could go with a new war, stage terror attacks, mass arrest, Internet kill switches. They are testing the waters right now to completely drop the hammer on us. This is a mega red alert, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Mike Adams was going to be here today with like four guests on a host of key issues and doing the nightly news tonight. I was going to be back tomorrow live. Uh, via Skype, spending some time with my family, and Aaron Dykes doing the nightly news. Uh, but quite frankly, now I made well, the great technology I can broadcast from anywhere. But this is a maximum, maximum alert. I know we're going to break here, but just briefly taking us to break, Mike Adams, what do you think of this information? Well, Alex, uh, what an extraordinary day in human history. As you mentioned, this issue is exploding. The the drapes are off. You know, the, the cover stories are exploding in their faces right now. It's very clear, Alex, that Fast and Furious is what probably led them to have the motivation to start to drum up these other plots to distract people. It's that sleight of mind or sleight of hand tactic that they always use. And we're going to be covering that more here on The Alex Jones Show with Alex himself, with Paul Joseph Watson, and with Dr. Steve Pachinik when we return. So stay with us right here. We'll be right back after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. It is the 13th day of October 2011. We're going to be live here for the next three hours. And yes, I'm not in studio. I'm on telephone. Uh, I was planning to take a few days off with my children, but broadcast via Skype uh, with a lot of important guests uh, coming up on Friday, Monday, Tuesday, uh, before returning to the studio. And Mike Adams was going to be sitting in today and will be sitting in, in studio for InfoWars radio show slash TV, InfoWars Live, as we call it, and then coming back tonight with InfoWars Nightly News, his uh, maiden hosting of that. Aaron Dykes is doing the Nightly News, 7 p.m., uh, tomorrow, and we appreciate the great work he's doing. 
Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, for two days, people have asked me what I think about the now confirmed, manufactured, fake Iran uh, Saudi embassy attack story. And uh, a lot of things were staring me, you know, right in the face, but I wanted to be deliberative on this. So I want to give you the announcement right now. This is the most important and, quite frankly, most ominous radio show I have done since July 25th, 2011, when I said the government was going to blow up the World Trade Center and blame it on their asset, Osama bin Laden, and launch wars. I could see the preconditioning. I didn't have all the sources I have now. I have two military sources known to me, two military sources. Then separately, I have a family military source who wouldn't give me details, but that's how I went and found out more. I have Dr. Steve Pachinik. I have Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer of U.S. Army. And more to tell you what I'm telling you now. Now, I'm going to give you the complete skinny right now. We're going to go to a clip. Again, Mike Adams is waiting in the wings here. It's very simple. The, the federal government was induced in the last three years under Fast and Furious to ship tens of thousands of firearms into Mexico. Cocaine was then shipped back into the United States under ATF, FBI, DEA, Coast Guard, Border Patrol, and several other agencies' authorization. Foreign intelligence agencies, including Israel, but also elements of our own intelligence agencies in the Pentagon, there's different camps, then began to leak that information so they could then blackmail domestic agencies and domestic leaders of agencies to go along with the police state takeover of the United States. To make sure that that happened, they needed outside war and to tie it into the cartels. That's what was done two days ago, as they knew that within less than 24 hours, Congressman Issa's subpoenas to the admitted liar, Attorney General John P. Holdren, were going out. Connecting it to Mexican cartels again, oh, now look, Obama is fighting the Mexican cartels that he's really shipping guns to. Several weeks ago, as you know, a second shipment of bunker buster missiles were delivered to Israel. We had uh, Ray McGovern on last week, former top CIA analyst Ronald Reagan and George Bush Sr., saying from his sources, this is the greatest green light ever for an Iran attack. Remember, Fox Fallon four years ago, they had a CENTCOM had to resign, refused to attack Iran with the fake PT boat thing that Cheney wanted to do, having fake PT boats attack our destroyers. Right now, they have 100% green-lighted a giant bombardment on Iran within the next two weeks. Israel could launch an attack tomorrow or any time in the next two weeks. U.S. military logistics forces, fighter bomber pilots, helicopter pilots, Ships, you name it, are all massing in and around the Persian Gulf. I have family who has just been deployed yesterday to Kuwait, 20-plus years in the military, has been put into logistics, readying helicopters in the, for the Gulf. It is on. The military does not want this. Repeat, the military does not want this. Uh, elements in the Pentagon that are good have, have loosed Colonel Schaefer, of course, blew the whistle on Able Danger and other ops, who, of course, blew the whistle that the Pentagon is upset about the Super Congress and a move towards Obama trying to become a dictator. So the White Hats in the Pentagon have now gone public, and here's the headline, FBI insider, Obama administration, likely manufactured, dubious terror plot. This is from yesterday. It's up at Infowars.com. This article needs to get out to everybody by Paul Joseph Watson. I cannot stress to you enough that it's not just a distraction from Fast and Furious with people saying Obama needs to step down, Democrats saying don't run again, his approval rating and free fall. That's the intelligence agencies globally and the private corporations and others positioning Obama for destruction if he doesn't do what he's told. That's getting all the agencies, eight of them, caught red-handed. They had to do it system-wide in every major city, getting FBI, ATF, DEA, and others involved shipping the guns so that even mid-level managers are now facing prison. 
Now they're being told, go along with martial law. My phone rang eight or ten times this morning. Ring, ring, ring. Pachinik never does that. And, and he basically just put his cards on the table. He goes, you know, I work with a lot of agencies. Yeah, he wrote the handbook on black ops. He goes, the good guys in the Pentagon don't want this, just like Schaefer. He goes, I want you to know you serve your country. You know, a lot of people appreciate it. You need to know the government's not all bad. The Pentagon doesn't want this attack. I mean, he was just right there, not even mincing words, as if we needed to know Pachinik, you know, is still involved in black ops. Give me a break. The point is, is they, he said they're getting ready to totally drop the hammer. It could lead into martial law, you name it. I cannot stress to you we've got to stop this war. If, this is the key. If they're able to sell this bogus baloney that Iran tried to assassinate Saudis here, as Schaefer said, it's total bull. He's gone to the FBI, high level. They searched the computers. It doesn't exist. It isn't true. This guy is a drunken idiot who they claim did it. Schaefer said it's probably an internal false flag. This guy's probably just an operative fake name to put the story out. All of this is coming to a head right now. They're getting ready to hit Iran. The globalists will then stage terror attacks all over the West. They will clamp down the media. Obama's approval rating will go to 85%, and they will ram through the austerity, the banker bailouts, all of it. This is it. I told you, a war, false flag, all of it was coming. It's here. They're about to, but the good news is you see the power structure doesn't like it, a lot of them. That's why there's all these articles all over. Even the New York Times says this Iran thing is bull. That's because a lot of people in the power structure have been brought to the edge of the cliff. And they realize what's about to happen. It's called World War III. The Iran situation goes from $10 a gallon gas and wars and terror attacks on the good end to World War III on the bad end, from bad to worse. Let's play this clip of Anthony Schaefer with Judge Andrew Napolitano yesterday on Fox Business. Here it is. Yesterday, the FBI alleged they had foiled an Iranian terror plot. But the main suspect has been in custody since September. So why did the Department of Justice wait until now to announce this threat? Is it mere coincidence as it comes at a time when House Republicans, as you've just heard, subpoenaed the head of the Justice Department, Attorney General Holder himself, for his marred gun-running program, Operation Fast and Furious, which, as you know, let military-grade weaponry get in the hands of Mex Mexican drug gangs? Or is there another explanation for this curious announcement that Mr. Holder made yesterday? Joining us by phone from Virginia is retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer. Colonel Schaefer, it's always a pleasure. Uh, welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you for having me, Judge. Sorry, well, I can't be there. Uh, as are we, but we appreciate you picking up the phone and calling us. What is your take uh, on this alleged uh, terror plot uh, involving Iran? Is this, is this the way the Iran intelligence uh, agencies usually operate engaging with somebody they thought were involved with mexican drunk gangs to assassinate a saudi arabian uh, ambassador in a public restaurant in new york or washington well it's a long way to get to a, a, a much easier target in other places and no I, I don't think so and obviously i've interrogated uh, the iranians uh, it's two, two chapters of my book operation dark heart are dedicated to this and and that's what makes me think twice about this. The American that they're accusing here, Judge, was uh, he, true enough. He has a dual uh, passport, Iranian American. But frankly, the, my experience has been directly that these people love being here. Once they're here, they love being here. And the idea of this guy, all of a sudden, after years being a, a successful, by all accounts, a successful used car salesman in, in Texas, part of the community, I, I would think it would be very difficult to imagine him just all of a sudden deciding that he's going to go against everything he's done for the past, you know, for the past 15 years. To do this, it just it, it, it does not smell smell correctly at this point in time. All right. Well, g give me, if you would, your best estimate as to what does spell correctly. For example, is it possible that this Iranian American is is a double agent who wanted to trick the government of the United States of America into taking some action uh, against Iran? There, is it a, likely there's... that the FBI concocted this whole thing, and because it was a sting, nobody was ever in danger? There was never a real plot. This guy was plotting with FBI agents who he thought were Mex uh, Mexican drug lords. What does Colonel Schaefer think really went down here? I think that's part of it. I, I think the reason it came out now is that literally this is red meat to uh, to a bunch of lions. You know, I think this is why they threw it out now at this point, not in September. Secondly, yeah, the, the FBI has had a record lately, and, and, and I did talk to one of my inside guys today, and he is saying that he thinks the same thing. You know why? Because he can't find any real information, and he's got a clearance. So that tells him that there's something going on that's extraordinary by the fact that he's an inside, you know, uh, investigator, 
knows what's going on, and yet, and I'm going to quote here, there's nothing on this within the DOJ beyond what they've talked about publicly, which means to him there's something very wrong with it. Uh, Look, the United States used failed and flawed intelligence to attack Iraq in 1991 and in 2003. Is there the danger that we might use something as preposterous as this plot, which was created and run and controlled by the FBI that was announced yesterday as a basis for invading the country of Iran, which, as you know, a lot of neocons in this country have been itching to get us to do? Right. i, I got to tell you, I, I, I do believe the Iranians do pose a threat. However, I agree with you on this. I, there's no reason to believe at this point that the intel is there to justify a direct military action. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen, much deeper the rest of the yeah. clip is up at InfoWars.com. We're going to be right back with Mike Adams, Paul Watson joining us, Dr. Steve Pachenik, and more. I'm Alex Jones. This is one of the most important broadcasts ever. Okay, we got Paul Watson waiting in the wings. He's just popping in for a few minutes here. Mike Adams is going to be hosting the whole show, and I leave here in about 20 minutes. It's Dr. Steve Pachenik popping in in the next segment. He concurs with my analysis and says he has that from his intelligence agency. Uh, connections. And remember, this is the guy who's literally overthrown governments. And he says that, yes, the power structure right now is in a big fight. Uh, he said Israel wants to go in and attack uh, right now. And, folks, we don't want World War III. But, but Mike Adams, and let Watson pop in later. He's going to have a report out on this. So he'll pop in later during the show. But uh, Mike Adams has asked me a question during the break. He said, why is it Saudi ambassadors? Why? Well, notice Mexico's involved, so that kind of muddies the water with the drug runner, uh, gun runner thing. Saudi Arabia was used in the fable of 9-11. Saudi Arabia was used with the Mujahideen against the Russians. Saudi Arabia's big allies with the U.S., England, and Israel. And Saudi Arabia, there's plausible deniability now to say, oh, there was a plot to bomb your embassy. That way it's not a U.S. embassy. So it's always the same players. And again, you heard Colonel Schaefer saying he talked to... The high-level Justice Department, the word is FBI. Schaefer's on tomorrow. He's on, he was getting on a plane with Jaron Colvin this morning to be on MSNBC about this. Uh, you know, Schaefer's saying high-level Justice Department said it's not in the computers. It's fake. It's not real. It's totally manufactured. It's perfect timing. The day before the subpoenas went out, and Israel's got the bunker busters. My cousin has just been deployed 20-something years in the Army. I called other Army sources. They said, how do you know this stuff? They said, I'm not talking to you. These are people I've known for a long time. Then, then Steve Pachenik calls up saying, it's on, it's on. Ladies and gentlemen, it has never been green-lighted like this, except when Fox Fallon said no and they fired him from CENTCOM. The military knows this is disastrous. Paul Watson, what's your intel on this? I know you've got an article coming out. We are on the verge of World War III. They are launching it. That's from multiple sources, Paul. We've got to get the article out and warn people. The the government blew its own cover on Fast and Furious to blackmail eight different federal agencies. Eight federal agencies took the bait in this criminal conspiracy. They're being blackmailed now. Do you understand that, Paul? Well, I mean, this makes the terror plots manufactured by the Bush administration which, of course, it was admitted that many of them were manufactured by Tom Ridge, former Homeland Security Director, makes them look sophisticated in comparison to this. I mean, it's so transparently fabricated that even the New York Times and the Washington Post today are having to admit that it's dubious, to say the least, because we're being asked to believe that the elite Iranian Al-Quds force hired a used car salesman from Corpus Christi to then hire assassins to blow up embassies and restaurants in uh, Washington, D.C. in order to try and kill the Saudi ambassador to the United States. Um, Obviously, again, it involves Mexican Los Zetas gang members. They were supposedly part of the plot. He was trying to pay them off to carry out the assassination. They were trained at Fort Benning, Georgia, and are used to knock out the, 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 the drug cartels that aren't laundering their money. This is ridiculous. Well, yeah, I mean, court transcripts from the past few months have proven again and again that Los Setters is completely infiltrated in, in cahoots with the federal government. They received many of the weapons that were part of the fast and furious cover-up. But, I mean, aside from the, the ludicrous notion that Iran would risk carrying out such a hit inside the United States when it would be far easier to do so anywhere in the Middle East, you know, aside from the fact that 
this highly trained Al Quds Iranian elite revolutionary guard force to a highly trained would entrust this plot to a used car salesman. As you just said, Schaefer dropped the bombshell last night on um, Judge Andrew Napolitano's Fox Business show. He talked to an FBI investigator with the necessary security clearance who went into the back channels, into the archives, and found no information whatsoever regarding the plot, which obviously directly suggests that it's been completely fabricated well, it out of whole cloth. it up and have expunged it because they're running it or it doesn't exist. Exactly. And isn't it ironic that the Obama administration has fabricated this hoax about Iran conducting assassinations on U.S. soil when we know from the Bush era program, which was continued by Obama, that the Central Intelligence Agency works with Jundullah, the Iranian Sunni al-Qaeda group, to carry out bombings and assassinations in Iran to destabilize their the government on a regular basis. Ago, put a press release out on it, Paul. I need you to get an article out with a searing headline, because you, a headline can't talk about how powerful this is. There's no way to be too sensational. I've got sources uh, across the board, including family who won't talk, but I know where they're going, uh, that it is on, it is on, it is on. Just like I told people they were going to bring down Gaddafi and invade in September, two months before it happened. It is on, folks, it is on. I want to repeat this. They are planning an Israeli-led bombardment on Iran. And people say, well, how does this indict them? It's just this idea. Well, they tried to attack America. You know, Steve uh, Pachenik will join us for a longer interview tomorrow uh, once I'm uh, on a better Skype uh, connection. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, also uh, we're riding shotgun today. was going to be hosting the whole show. Uh, Mike Adams in studio there at the InfoWars studios. He'll be doing InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, this evening, we do have Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer, uh, who came on a month ago and said that the Pentagon is upset about the move towards dictatorship of the Super Congress here in America. Schaefer basically speaks for the better elements of the Pentagon. There are different power structures. Uh, he was on Freedom Watch yesterday. FBI insider Obama administration is manufacturing this dubious terror plot. Uh, it doesn't exist. It's made up, according to his FBI, high-level security clearance source. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik contacted me this morning and said from his Pentagon sources and others, they don't want to hit Iran, and that this is all basically a setup for the buildup for Israel to hit them. Uh, I have family that's been deployed to Kuwait. I won't talk about it, but I know what he works in. It's logistics and uh, helicopter gunships, getting those ready for there in the Persian Gulf. And I've made some calls to other military sources when I learned this two nights ago. And uh, they said, how on earth do you know this? I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, that The word is the, the, the U.S. military is preparing to back up Israel uh, when the Iranians close the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, a, a gallon of gas will go from 8 to $10 conservatively. Uh, the Iranians will probably respond. Uh, different intelligence agencies can stage terror attacks. It's also blame it on Iran. Uh, Russia, China could get involved. This will undoubtedly destroy the economy. But it'll be a nice political diversion. What did Gerald Salente and others say? Look for a big war. Uh, what did Lindsey Williams say a year ago on our show? He said, next is Iran. And uh, that's from his big oil company, uh, Insiders. And I know who those sources are. One of them's died now. We can talk about him. Ken Fromm, the former head of Atlantic Richfield. The other one's even more high-powered. Uh, so so uh, we have all that information uh, right there. And Schaefer... Uh, came on a month ago and said, yes, Pentagon people, high level, he's basically a mouthpiece for them at a certain level, he's joining us tomorrow, are upset about Obama moving towards a super Congress and dictatorship. Um, Schaefer's concerned about that. I know Dr. Steve Pachenik, whose bio is too long, will be joining us for longer tomorrow. He's waiting in the wings right now. Uh, you know, Co-author of Tom Clancy's books, you know that, ran Black Ops, wrote the book the State Department on psychological warfare. Uh, he, he hardly ever calls me. And this morning he was calling over and over again. I was on the treadmill. And I jumped off and ran over there, and he said just immediately, I said, are you calling about the Iran thing? And he said, yes. You know, the, well, I'll let him say it in his own words. But crystallized, Dr. Pachenik, uh, everything you're telling me is what I have from three military sources, what I've got from Schaefer, what I've got from Common Sense. Uh, this is incredible uh, that a high-level FBI with the highest-level security clearance says this plot doesn't exist. 
We're to believe Los Zetas, we know trained at Fort Benning, Georgia, and are narcotics enforcers for big central bank uh, systems, are supposedly working with some used car salesman. This is unbelievable. And it's right on time as Obama. People are talking about him stepping down, don't run again. Uh, Fast and Furious subpoenas go out. I know you've got incredible sources, and you basically put the cards on the table. You said, look, Alex, you know, I talked to a lot of people, you know, a lot of people in intelligence appreciate the service you're doing. And, and I'm not getting into ego here. The point is I got from what you were saying that you've got a lot of sources like Schaefer does and that there are good guys in the government, the Pentagon, that are upset about what's happening. So let's put the cards on the table. Uh, the, the intel I've got is a strike on Iran by Israel within two weeks. The U.S. then responding uh, when Iran totally shuts down the oil supply. Well, the, the issue, and I can't thank you enough, and I, and I know our, our country, the real military and the real uh, patriots and the intelligence community uh, really love you and, and really are grateful. I came on because, once again, as a citizen, I'm not a hero, I'm a citizen, saying once again I have the, that this whole issue that came out of uh, Mexico, this entire nonsensical story, which even Mueller shamefully said was a Hollywood script, which it is, and it's a very bad script, where an informer, car salesman, talks about the potential of killing a Saudi ambassador in the United States, and that somehow this Iranian is related to people in Iran is absolutely absurd. It's disinformation. DEA has had a terrible history of corruption, incompetence, as you've seen in Fast and Furious. And more importantly, this is an indictment, once again, of Eric Holder, who lied to Congress. He's lied, now lied to the American public about what he has supposedly learned in an uh, investigation. And more importantly, Mueller, who I'm absolutely ashamed of, the FBI director, who's a, a war hero from the Vietnam, has won major awards and, and was a, a, a combat hero, has been involved in 9-11, now is involved in this nonsensical story to create a pretext for an uh, attack by Israel on Iran. Now, why do I say that? Because two things happened. When I heard this nonsensical uh, intelligence report by DEA, ATF, CIA, and other elements, all of whom have been compromised and have had intelligence problems in the past, i.e., as we witnessed in the Osama bin Laden stupidity story, where no one in the world, absolutely no one in the world believes it, neither does Obama, and now Biden, the most incompetent vice president we had, with two annuals a history of plagiarism, and Hillary Clinton, a woman who is pathologically a liar, incompetent, is reaffirming that Iran, who has repeatedly said we don't need to attack the United States on their home base. I know the Iranians. I was involved with Khomeini. I was involved with Rasanjani. I don't love them, but I have respect for them. And they're very clear on their intention. Furthermore, the Iranians have proxy fights in Afghanistan with our soldiers and in Iraq. And at the same time, you can ask our generals that they have worked with the Iranians to keep down the Shiite populations, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. So both Biden is lying and is incompetent. And by the way, his in-law is Tom Donlan, who really should not be there. Obama once again is lying, once again should be considered for impeachment. We have serious war crimes here. Well, now, why do I say this? Because two weeks ago, and the no. Reporters didn't mention this. Cluster bombs were sent to Israel. Now, there is no reason for Israel to receive cluster bombs. They cannot. Cluster bombs are used to break up the tarmacs on other Air Force bases, but they're used to instigate a war. Now, cluster bombs do not necessarily be used in Syria because the Syrians have helped the Israelis with Hamas and the PLO. The Egyptians have now helped the Israelis release a, a soldier for 1,000 Palestinians. So Israel is not going to be using a cluster Bomb, but Israel needs to divert attention away from its domestic problems where a million people have been unemployed from the fact that it is, has an incompetent, dysfunction civilian government, Netanyahu, and will create a war to divert that attention because the state of Palestine will be and should be recognized by the U.N., and this is exactly what should happen around the world. In order to divert that attention, it has convinced Joseph Biden and Hillary Clinton, two major supporters of the Jewish community here so that it can be uh, mobilized in order to support an Obama election, which does not look very likely. 
And ironically, Obama is creating another incident at the same way when Bush Jr. had very low approval in the ratings, when the unemployment was very high. And unlike George Bush Jr., whom I thought would have been the worst president, Obama is turning out to be by far the worst incompetent president we have ever had, who really should be impeached for the lies he committed, for the travesties of justice. And now for the incompetency. You have Biden, you have Hillary Clinton, you have Mueller, you have Panetta, all civilians. But that does not explain why our military, which has had to retreat from two wars and has been used as cannon fodder by civilians who were totally incompetent and sent into war to die for our country. We have the most brilliant, effective leaders in our military that I've ever seen in 30 years. They have been quiet. They have followed orders, but they are sick and tired of listening to incompetent civilians sending our brave men and women into battle and dying. We have special forces that work 24-7 time all over the world to knock out extremists, and yet they get no support. Our veterans get no support back here. And now, in order to uh, to uh, uh, promote his, his, Obama's election, he has gone to war again and created this nonsensical, but it is so absurd, this nonsense that Iran is about to attack the United States. Iran does not have to attack the United States. As a matter of fact, when I was involved with Khomeini, not one of our hostages was ever injured by Khomeini. It was, in fact, the terrorist group, the MEK, which is being supported by Free, a former head of the FBI, and was called the Musa Khadin that killed some of my CIA operatives, my my. State Department operatives, and they, in turn, are being supported by some of the prominent, uh, both liberals and right-wingers, who are receiving money. If you look at the list of the MEK, it's an issue we should talk about. They want them off the terrorist list. The real terrorists were the Musa Hadin who killed all of our uh, civilians and operatives in uh, Tehran. Hey, Dr. Pachinik, this, this is Mike Adams here. Um, uh, you're not able to hear Alex because he's on a cell phone, but Alex... Uh, what, what's your take on all this? Well, let me just throw this in. No, no, Steve's on a, uh, uh, a cell phone, so when I'm when I'm talking, he can't hear me. I was just going to throw this in, sir. I have military sources. I know you have a hundred times what I have. I have common sense. I have Schaefer, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, coming out and being green lighted. You know, who still is in the Pentagon and is also part of a big think tank to say this is bull. The New York Times has come out today and said this terror plot is made up. That shows the major elements of the power structure are saying, don't go into Iran, just like Fox Fallon said no to Cheney when he tried to stage the attack. So these are my two questions for you, and tomorrow we'll get more into this. We appreciate you coming on on short notice. My, my point was, what are your current uh, sources, and we know you've got a lot of them, are they concurring with what I've been told, that Israel right now is test ballooning and intends to hit Iran in the next two weeks with bunker busters and cluster bombs to stop their Air Force retaliatory strike. They've just put into place more anti-medium-range uh, 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 anti-ballistic missile systems. And, and the word we've got is the attack on Iran has now been green-lighted. They've put up this balloon, oh, look, Iran's going to attack us, and that it is on. So, A, what is your intel on that? A. B, what, what do you expect the Iranians to do what are the different things that can happen if Iran is struck? Because the, the, the people like Ray McGovern and others I've talked to who work, you know, the CIA as analysts, they say it runs from bad to worst. Okay, sir, those are my questions, those two questions. The first answer is I, I will not quote any of my sources in my uh, extensive experience as a member of the Association of Former Intelligence Officers, the National Military Intelligence Association, and my extensive experience in dealing with Iran with terrorists and incompetent civilians, you are absolutely right. We are creating a false flag situation where Israel will go forth to attack Iran. What will happen in turn is Iran will not touch the United States. It never has 
and it never will. Iran is very effective at putting up pressure, number one, on Hezbollah, on Israel, on two, on Hamas, and, and affect Israel's northern border, its eastern border, and its southern border. In effect, what Israel is doing is approaching Armageddon, where it's, it's continuing its self-destructive behavior both militarily and civilian. I ask the Israeli ex-commanders of the IDF and the Mossad to come forth and to stop Netanyahu and stop the Americans who are involved in this attack because Israel will be seriously destroyed. The state of Palestine will exist. Egypt will be there. Syria will maintain its low-intensity conflict, but Iran will exact a huge amount of of, of problems for Israel, and Israel knows that, and Israel cannot handle that. The IDF cannot handle three borders which will be exposed. It cannot handle both Hezbollah on the north, Hamas on the south, and the Jordanian border, which is extremely, extremely vulnerable. Steve, and at the question. same time, the Middle East will erupt in violence because Bahrain is the area where our military and the surrogates have effectively fighting Iran. But Iran will not be involved in domestic terrorism. How do we they don't stop need this it. Aminishad is a very smart man. I always respect my enemies. And one of the things that's a problem is I do not respect our civilians. If I, as I have said repeatedly on this show, the American public has to be awakened to the fact we have an incompetent, dangerous president. I'm not saying Democrat or Republican. We had it truthfully with, uh, with Bush Jr. But this one really is out of control. You have... Biden, who is totally incompetent, a history of plagiarism, a history ineffectual, with his family as being the National Security Council. You have a CIA that's totally out of control, and Panetta, who's never had experience in national security and Dr. Pachenik, uh, uh, I'm sorry Dr. for interrupting. How do we stop the war? How do we stop this from happening? You stop uh, the war, and, and of course, the, head head of the former head of Mossad came out, as you, you know, have, two weeks ago and said attacking Iran would be a terrible idea. But Netanyahu wants it politically. So, so how do we stop this? The Israeli people have to go into the streets. There's a million of them. And around the world, the civilians must go into the streets to demonstrate that there can be no more wars and that they have to stop the Israelis from attack and from the United States supplying Israel with weapons that are totally irrelevant to the national security of the United States. I will not quote our generals, but I feel that some of our generals have correctly stated years ago Israel is a strategic liability. Let me repeat it again. This is not just an emotional Republican or Democratic issue. There is no need for us to have Israel on our southern or eastern flank. Israel has had its own national security. Israel has funded against all its sanctions. That's why Hillary is lying like a banshee through the Ulfer family oil into Iran while at the same time condemning the nuclear program. Israel has repeatedly manipulated the APAC and the Jewish community in the United States and the world to say that it's being persecuted when in fact it has not been persecuted. Israel has been out of control. Last year it had 25 operatives trying to kill one operative in, in Dubai. Israel is in fact dysfunctional. The people of Israel has to mobilize into the streets Christian Jews and Muslims to stop Netanyahu. He is out of control. He was not the brightest man we ever saw under Baker. I remember he was kicked out of the office by Maker Baker. Lieberman is totally incompetent. But I ask the Israeli former commanders, they know who they are. Uh, Dr. Pachenik, we, 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 we've got to go to break here shortly. Alex, do you, uh, is there anything you want to say no, no, before we go to break? Dr. Pachinik for one more segment, and you've got guests coming on. Dr. Pachinik will be back with us tomorrow. This issue could not be more important, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate Dr. Pachinik joining us. The green light for war is on. we got to turn it off. It's InfoWars uh, Radio uh, with uh, Steve Pachinik, and we've got Mike Adams riding shotgun. I'm going to sign off for now. Paul Watts is coming up later. Spread the word. World War III is about to start. All right, folks, we'll be right back after this break. Every day, I'm filling in for Alex, who has been joining us by phone for the last 45 minutes or so. We're also joined by Dr. Steve Pachinik, who has been giving us an analysis and a breakdown of this just truly extraordinary historical news 
uh, groundbreaking. You need to listen in to what is being said here today because we are talking about a false flag pretext for war in the Middle East, having now been, as we're saying here, fabricated by the Obama administration. And continuing with Dr. Pachinik, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure, um, number one is the incompetence of this apparent false flag operation. Doesn't that strike you as a pattern from the Obama administration? If you remember the, the incompetence of how they tried to forge the birth certificate, it was obviously a fake. Well, this is obviously a, a fake terror plot. Does that strike you as, as something characteristic? Well, let, let, let me start. I don't want to get into the birth certificate, but what's really the most fascinating part about Obama is the fact that he doesn't want to talk about his mother having been a CIA operative, his grandmother being a CIA operative, and his grandfather. His mother was a very impressive woman who worked at the uh, Hawaiian Asian Pacific Center, which was a CIA front, and I, I honor her. And his grandmother was involved in banking for funding in East Asia. His mother went into Indonesia speaking Russian and uh, a white woman in Arabic. So what's missing is this connection between him and the CIA. So you know that the CIA is very much a part of this and has been under 9-11 and has been out of control. And it's one of the things that Eisenhower has always said, this is, you need a certain kind of genius to control the CIA. And unfortunately, we have not had it. I'm, I'm hoping that General Petraeus can put them in line, but you have the DEA, you have the ATF, and these are not uh, functional uh, institutions. With all due respect to the FBI, they are brilliant domestically, but Mueller has really discredited himself twice on the 9-11 and today. And this is a, a war hero in Vietnam. And if I were he, I would resign uh, out of just dignity. Eric Holder should be indicted. Uh, he's totally dysfunctional. Uh, he has lied. Uh, he has committed perjury in front of Congress. He has lied to the American public. And now what you have is dysfunctional, the most dysfunctional story of all uh, uh, is the fact that Osama bin Laden. There is no one in the world that believes that Osama bin Laden was killed and then was dumped into the waters. I mean, it was so absurd, it became ridiculous. Even Mueller came forth on this story about the assassination plot, saying it's like a Hollywood movie, as if he was trying to co-opt himself. And the truth of the matter is, Mueller, I'm sorry, but you failed once again, and it's beyond a Hollywood movie. No producer in their right mind would have bought this, because it's not true, it has no consistency, it's dysfunctional, and once again, you have opera who have no idea of how to create a false flag. Well, how much, how much of this do you think stems from the heat that Attorney General Holder must now be feeling as the subpoenas are about to be handed to him? And it looks like uh, he's about to be handed his hat and shown the door uh, because of his involvement in Fast and Furious. Is that a key motivation, you think, behind yes. this? I would say that's one of them, the fact that he is going to be handed a door. He should be actually prosecuted for lying in front of Congress, for perjury, uh, for distortion, disinformation, for inciting a war. I mean, Eric Holder should be held accountable for a lot of uh, malfeasance. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I certainly know the, the miscreant behavior he has had. It's not only his heat, but you have a president who has not performed, who has not been able to create jobs, who has polarized the country, and has basically has very low ratings. The only way presidents historically in the United States have created an increased ratings, and this one is pitiful. All right, is Dr. Pachinik, we are just Trump about Trump out of time Trump. here. I apologize for cutting you off. Uh, uh, we're out of time for this segment. I want to thank you for joining us. And I know you're going to be back on tomorrow, I believe, for additional analysis. So thank you for joining us. Also, here on The Alex Jones Show, we are going to continue to break this down and uh, have additional analysis. As we're talking about a false flag pretext for war in the Middle East, the Obama administration now practically being caught just, just fudging a false flag attempted assassination plot against a, a Saudi ambassador in the United States involving a, an Iranian used car salesman from Texas who has uh, been just probably another, another patsy set up by perhaps the FBI, perhaps the CIA, certain rogue elements within those agencies. I'm going to ask Paul Watson about uh, more about that. But let's go to the mainstream media very quickly and see how they are beating the drums for war. Beating the war drums, the Washington...
Post. Obama blames Iran government for role in assassination plot against Saudi diplomat. Wow, how convenient is that? Problem, reaction, solution. From the Obama administration, uh, a former Netanyahu advisor says, time for the U.S. to strike Iran? Mm, uh, the very convenient pretext there. Daily News says uh, Iran's terror plot marks the end of engagement. It's time for Washington to get tough with Tehran. Oh, really? Time to get tough because of this? Because of this just juvenile assassination plot? Really? Uh, what else do we have here? Treasury official, Iran sanctions are working and we should keep them going. This is from CNN Politics. Uh, Baltimore Sun reports, I, attacking Iran would invite disaster. Here's a little different point of view on this. Uh, yeah, of course it would invite disaster, disaster for Israel and much more. Uh, here's something from CBS News, very interesting. It leads off with, quote, the alleged plot to kill the Sa Saudi ambassador to the United States was comically amateurish. Yeah, no kidding. But the U.S. government believes not only that it was approved at high levels in Tehran, but also that it was not the only plot from CBS News correspondent Bill Plante. Now, we're going to bring in Paul Joseph Watson, who has already reported on this and is going to be uh, posting another story. Paul Watson, are you with us now? Are you with us via Skype? Hello, Mike. Hello, Paul. Great to hear from you. All right, yeah, well, basically what's happening is that um, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta visited Tel Aviv back on October 3rd. And it appears as if the Israelis basically told him, look, we've got a two-month window for this strike on Iran. We've got to get it done before winter, because if we wait, then it's going to make it a whole lot more difficult. Um, and the debate apparently has been on how the United States would give the green light for this Israeli assault on Iran. So lo and behold, less than two weeks later, we have this ridiculous fantasy hoax of a terror plot, which it now turns out the so-called mastermind behind it, this used car salesman, turns out to be a drunk, pothead, hooker-frequenting, quote, joke. That's how he's being described. But now this fake plot is being aggressively exploited from everyone from, you know, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry to John McCain. And it's interesting because back in February last year, we wrote that it would be an assassination attempt that would be used as the pretext to go into Iran. Now, we speculated that it might be Obama as the target. It actually turns out that Obama is now being pressured by the neocons he's being blackmailed into this attack because they're saying this is the only way to get tough to save your presidency is to green light this attack on iran so you know 10 days after panetta visits tel aviv the israelis basically tell him look this is what's going to happen you better get on board with it and uh, then 10 days later we have this ridiculous fake terror plot which is An anthony schaefer Lieutenant Colonel told Andrew Napolitano last night on Fox Business is a complete myth. There's no evidence to detail it within the FBI channels. Schaefer had an FBI insider, an FBI, FBI investigator, look to see if he could find any details regarding this alleged plot, and he found absolutely nothing. It's being completely manufactured out of whole cloth, and now it's being used as the pretext to green light this planned pre-planned Israeli assault on Iran. But Paul, importantly on this and an outstanding analysis you've offered us already, and I know more coming from you today with new stories to be posted on Infowars.com, but the, the question is, is the mainstream media going to continue to buy it? And will the people of America buy into this, even though it is now an obvious hoax? I mean, we've got some media outlets are questioning it. Others are buying into it. Where do you see this playing out across the mainstream media and then in the minds of the American people? Uh, were you able to hear me there, Paul? Yeah, it's just cutting out a bit, but yeah, I got the gist of what you were saying. Yeah, the Washington Post, the New York Times and others have come out with articles admitting that most foreign observers and terror experts doubt the credence of this plot. 
But then in the rest of the article, they'll go on to detail the frivolous, you know, storyboard, the myth behind it. What they're saying now is that there's a chain of plots that are going to be blamed on Iran. So this is only going to escalate. And now Time magazine has come out and basically said, look, the response to this is not going to be sanctions. It's not going to be isolation of Iran. It's a pretext for war. So they're going beyond saying that it's just going to be another tactic to isolate Iran and saying that, that you know, Obama's going to, going to have to get tough or he's going to be accused of being, quote, soft on Iran. So that's what the likes of Time magazine are saying. So they're going to play this game where Obama gets the right cover from the neocons, uh, Michelle Bachman, Romney, they've all come out, all the so-called Tea Party people, and said that it, you know, it proves the case that we need to go and attack Iran. So Obama's got right cover from his supposed political enemies who have all teamed up together to support him. And now, you know, the green light's being given. Uh, Paul Watson, do you, does the term uh, CS1 mean anything to you? CS1 as a, a referring to a paid informant with the Department of Justice. I'm just getting some, some breaking news handed to me here. Uh, is that something you've covered so far? Yeah, I believe that's that's the Department of Justice um, go-between that this this joke of a, of a mastermind went and visited and he gave him the orders to create the ledger, which they could then exploit to... Um, put out this myth in the media that it was a big a big dangerous assassination plot involving Mexican drug cartels. Of course, as we've documented, those very same Mexican Los Cetas gang members from court transcripts that have come out in recent months have been proven to be working directly in cahoots with the federal government itself. And in fact, many of the weapons from Fast and Furious, the guns went directly to Los Cetas gang members. So, I mean... From the DEA agent to the Los Setters, they were all working together. And then they find this idiot joke of a guy who's into, you know, smoking pot, getting drunk and frequenting brothels um, to be the, the, quote, mastermind of this plot. It's completely inconsistent with how Al-Quds, the Iranian Revolutionary Special Tactics Unit, works, as every terror expert has said. They're not going to hire some idiot drunk in America to carry out an assassination plot, and they wouldn't even carry it out in America. This ambassador is going to be in the Middle East most of the time. Why not just carry it out there? Why would you do it in Washington, D.C.? It's ridiculous, and uh, every expert has said so. Very good questions from you, Paul Watson. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. I know you've got to go to keep working on the story that you're about to post on Infowars.com. Can you give us a, an idea? When, when can people expect that story to be live? Yeah, it's, it's uh, terror hoax could foreshadow Israeli attack on Iran. And it'll be up within half an hour on Infowars.com. All right, all right, there you have it then. Terror hoax story to be posted on Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson coming up hopefully within half an hour. Now, how's that for pressure for Paul Watson? I bet he's scrambling there. Thank you for joining us, Paul, for taking time out of your busy uh, journalism schedule there also to get us that story. Now, some of the breaking news we have on this, and by the way, this is all teleprompter-free radio, just like Infowars Nightly News is teleprompter free. This is all breaking news right now. This is huge breaking news. And so uh, bear with us as as we bring in different stories and different guests and different pieces of evidence here. The, the latest piece that I'm seeing here is uh, a story entitled Paid DOJ Agent Provocateur at the Center of, quote, Iranian Terrorist Plot. This was written by Kyle Rogers from the Charleston Political Buzz Examiner. And in that story, he says... He asked the question, was the assassination plot an actual plot or just entrapment? Well, that's because the FBI, as we know, goes out there and recruits patsies. We've seen this pattern emerging just over and over again where they recruit these people who are largely incompetent, just like what we are seeing here. And then the FBI actually gives them the gear, gives them, for example, the remote controlled airplane that was supposed to be flown into the Pentagon. 
gives them the explosives, gives them the, the firearms and the grenades in that case. And there are many other cases, other attempted, uh, quote, attempted bombings, uh, attempted terrorist events, where it's on the record now, it's been exposed that the FBI itself, or perhaps, let's say, a, a rogue element within the FBI, because I don't, I don't want to say that all FBI agents are bad. That's not true. There are many very good men and women in the FBI who are doing their jobs, and I want to give them credit, but there are also rogue elements within every agency that uh, appear to be putting together these false flag attacks for the sole purpose of reminding us all in an Orwellian type of style that we are always at war and we should always be afraid. Now, in this case, they're amping it up to a whole new level with this, what, what looks like a false flag assassination attempt. They're saying not just be afraid, not just be, uh, be terrified uh, that, that there are terrorists running around everywhere, but even more so that, oh, now we have the moral justification to go to war or to allow Israel to bomb Iran, to, to allow a key U.S. ally to engage in a, what's going to be a, a murderous attack, a, a high fatality rates, no doubt attack on Iran, which now looks imminent. As Alex said, when he joined us in the last hour, he believes this may happen within two weeks. You know, certainly give or take a, a, some timetable on that. We don't have a crystal ball around here, but we do see the patterns and we do know history. And we do know when there's a problem reaction solution being presented to us so that we will react and then allow these administrations to commit what are essentially illegal acts and then justify it with these actions that they have fabricated from the get-go. So I've got some, some questions about this and some analysis that I want to share with you. We are, what, five minutes away from a break. Good, we've got enough time to do this. And by the way, we are going to be joined at the top of the next hour by Mark Castell from the Cornucopia Institute, who's going to be giving us information about how GMOs have been found, detected, verified in laboratories in so-called natural food products, natural cereals. You know, most people think natural foods are better than, than everything else. They think that they have no pesticides and no GMOs, and it turns out that is not exactly the case. Now, just coming in here on my desk, we have a tip from a listener, Aaron in Canada. Thanks for sending this in. This is a an article, Canada should arrest George W. Bush when he visits next week, says Amnesty. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, Bush admitted in his memoirs that he authorized the use of torture against terror suspects. All of this was authorized, George Bush wrote, and condoned and put in place through his own repeated decision. I'm sorry, that's not what George Bush wrote. That is, that is being quoted from the story. All of this was authorized and condoned and put in place through his own repeated decisions, he being President, former President Bush. So uh, Amnesty is saying he should be arrested when he shows up in Canada. Well, that would be interesting. Uh, wasn't Rumsfeld, uh, didn't someone try to arrest Rumsfeld when he was traveling through Europe a couple of years ago? These These sort of unindicted war criminals running, running around who uh, many of the awakened people are trying to get arrested. That's an interesting bit of news. Yeah, if you have any more news coming in on uh, either Fast and Furious or this false flag assassination attempt, just jump on in here, bring it, bring it to me. We're going to jump in at any moment that's necessary to cover this story. Let me ask you the question, listeners, what do you suppose happens if Israel bombs Iran. Uh, what is the aftermath of that? Now, if you've been listening to the Alex Jones show for any length of time, you probably have a, a very solid grasp of what we're talking about that would happen in the aftermath of that. And uh, I'd love to have, man, I'd love to be talking to Bob Chapman right now about this. I would, I would love to have Gerald Salente on right now. But let me just take a, a, a whack at this. You can expect oil prices to just skyrocket globally. Massive spike in oil prices, uh, maybe gasoline at, at five to ten dollars a gallon in the aftermath of a strike on Iran. What about gold prices? Well, of course, gold prices would spike. How high? 
We don't know, but maybe this would hit that $2,500 an ounce target that was mentioned previously, I believe, by, by Bank of America. Uh, what about people who would see this as a, a, an increased tensioning of world events and they would be more interested in preparedness? I think you would see a run on ammunition in the U.S. I think you'd see a run on preparedness supplies and preparedness food and, and gear. Uh, I think uh, many of these companies that offer these products would, would be back ordered after a strike on Iran. You would also have, of course, radioactive fallout if a nuclear facility, a nuclear processing facility was targeted in the strike, which is almost a certainty. What else would Israel be going after other than the political leadership of Iran and also the nuclear processing facilities? Now, if that happens, and I really wish we had a nuclear expert on here who could give us even more details about this, and perhaps we will. Let's see what we can do about that. Uh, in, in the next hour, but you're going to have essentially a dirty bomb unleashed, a massive radioactive tidal wave of contamination sweeping across Iran. Now, which way do the winds blow across Iran and who, which neighbors are going to be affected by this? What is going to be the cost in human lives and suffering and future sickness from the potential radioactive fallout if there is an Israeli strike on Iran. These are questions that you've got to consider now that the, the pretext for this is, is right in our faces. Now stay with us here on the Alex Jones Show. We're going to continue to talk about this and we'll have more guests on on the other side of this break. I'm Mike Adams filling in today for Alex. Stay with us. We'll be right back Alex, after this break. Are you with us? Hey, Mike, I'm just driving down the highway. You know, I had planned to take off a few days on a working vacation before it gets too cold. Uh, they're going to go out camping and stuff with the kids here. And uh, did an hour from my house this morning. I'm now on the road uh, calling in. Uh, how's my audio coming in, Roger? It's coming in loud and clear here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, look, I've just been surfing on my little globalist flame tracker iPhone while I'm listening to you on the other iPhone app, plugged into the stereo here uh, in the... Uh, InfoWars mobile, and you mentioned the Charleston paper and others. The New York Times has come out and said that this is baloney, and and this isn't where they go out and set up the Iranian national, you know, secret police. This is where they just go out and and, and usually recruit somebody to be part of the drill, and then the person takes part in the drill and they set them up, or they're not even involved, or they find a mentally ill person. You know, that's the MO over and over again, and even mainstream media admits. The FBI in the last two years, as you pointed out, more than 100 cases of this have come out over and over again to create this perception of a threat instead of carrying out a big elaborate false flag like 9-11. But there's no doubt with, with Obama plunging, no doubt with the global bankers not getting their agenda through, that the global crisis that would come out of an Iran strike, even though it would be bad for the economy, people primitively tend to still rally around their governments in Europe and the U.S., and so I've been saying, and just as you wrote two weeks ago, uh, for your exact headline at naturalnews.com, it was something like, conditions now ripe for false flag. What was your exact headline? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, conditions are ripe. Because like you said, remember the George Bush moment after 9-11 where he took the bullhorn and, and looked really presidential? This, this is what Obama is being set up for here, to look presidential in this war crisis. It's obvious. Exactly. You're exactly right. Hey, hold on one second. Hey, guys. Hey, kids, please, please keep it down. I'm on the radio. Yeah, bear okay. with us, folks. It's live know, live radio here, breaking news happening here. So uh, uh, not not scripted. Alex, uh, can, go ahead, sir. Sure, I was just telling my children not to talk. Uh, I could probably put my son on here and get his analysis, though. But it's probably better than the general public's understanding of this. I've heard all the neocons on the radio going, this, uh, Breaking in 30 seconds, Alex. Time to, time to glass parking lot. Em. I'll go to break with you and then come back and break down how serious this is. This is green lighted right now, folks. We got to get the word out on this false flag hoax, or it's over. They're going to World War III, and that means their domestic agenda. All right, gonna... stay with us, folks. We're going to break. We'll be right back. More with Alex here on the Alex Jones Show. He's joining us by phone right now to continue analyzing this situation. There's a lot that's going to come out of this, and you can expect continued coverage here on the Alex Jones Show and the Infowars.com website. Uh, Alex, are you still with us on the phone? Yes, sir. I'm going to get out of here uh, at the end of this segment. And uh, let you get the calls and your other guests that are coming up. Then, of course, we've got Pepe Escobar who was inside Libya. He concurs. This is a false flag, uh, in his words, inside job. 
He's going to be joining you on InfoWars Nightly News this evening, along with the guests that uh, you wanted to have on uh, on other issues. All of, listen, right now it is green-lighted. Israel is going ahead with the attack, as Panetta said 10 days ago, uh, as Ray McGovern said last week when he was on with us. And, and then we got to get Ray McGovern on tomorrow for like 10, 15 minutes if he can, if he can do it. Uh, so, so, so all of that is happening. Obama is being politically destroyed. Israel wants to launch this attack. That Yahoo needs it politically. Uh, all of this is going on. Israel's lost wars in Lebanon and other areas. So uh, the, the hawks over there are hot for this war. It'll massively increase oil prices. The oil companies like that. Uh, it will hurtle the wo- world into a massive global crisis. So this is serious, serious, serious. Right now, it is green lighted. This is not a potential green light. Uh, I've talked to two military sources and another through family. Uh, who's being shipped over there right now, and logistics, it is on. U.S. supporting Israel in a strike, and all of this is just to have a headline there to divert the public that, well, after all, Iran wanted to blow up an embassy in D.C., so old Obama's pretty bad, but he still hit him. And then the establishment elements of it are using fast and furious and you notice the neocons, or the Republican leadership, is demanding this new war, along with Israel. They're using that to get Obama in line for it. Yes, it is. When Los Netas and, 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 and Sinaloa drug cartel shipping drugs uh, into the United States and shipping guns down there, that goes back five and a half years. That's in the El Paso Times other papers. So, 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 so Issa is using this right now. He's using this right now uh, as a way to basically put pressure on Obama to go ahead and go with this war. That's how blackmail in government works. That's how statecraft works. This is on, Mike. This is going to happen if we don't expose this hoax. Well, it seems like every war always has this fairy tale pretext. Remember, remember uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, that was that was sold to us as the justification for it. Now we're going to have this this embassy bombing attempt even if it later comes out that it was completely fabricated the media will conveniently forget it and, and and they'll say well the war was justified anyway all by itself later on right i mean they have this, this strange memory of, of reality exactly we've seen fraud after fraud hoax after hoax the little nobody puppet teleprompter reader uh, is being threatened right now. Hillary launched the Fast and Furious. They had it planned to set him up all along. Uh, to tell these absolutely wicked, duplicitous scumbags work. Then they can get our guns, destroy our republic. Remember, during this war, they can put their homeland security on the streets, their, their TSA on the streets, and oh, you're yeah. to buy into it. Yet another reason. Yeah, exactly right. Department of Homeland Security must be all over this, too. Well, this is the thing. There are so many people and organizations that benefit from this. How do we stop this, Alex? We've got to call into every talk radio show and point out it's staged because of the vast and furious cover-up that this war was green-lighted. We've got to call Congress. We've got to support Ron Paul. This is also being used now to demonize Ron Paul. Look, he didn't want war with Iran. He's with them. All right, we've we got to get the word out on this. Mike, I'm going to let you go. Get back to the transmission. God okay. bless you all. I'm- all right, thank you, Alex, right. for joining us. We're going to break, folks. Stay with us. We will continue with more on the other side of this break. Stay with us here on the Alex Jones Show. Breaking news all day long. It's, it's a crazy world out there. The story we promised earlier from Paul Joseph Watson has now been posted on Infowars.com. Title is Sources. U.S. gives Israel green light for Iran strike. Oh my, here we go, beating the war drum once again. Paul Joseph Watson says the Obama administration's fabricated terror plot blamed on Iran represents the green light for an Israeli attack on Iran set to take place within the next two weeks says, uh, according to confidential military sources who spoke with Alex Jones. The story goes on. You can find the story posted at Infowars.com. It goes into some of the details of what is happening behind the scenes. 
I bet you, I bet you the CIA and the FBI are tuning in and listening to this show right now today, and they are probably learning some new things because there are, you know, there are factions within every group in government, and some factions have put this into play, and other factions probably tried to resist it or are trying to stop it, and they're shocked just as you are shocked, just as we are shocked by this, how so many of the key globalist players in our world are pushing us towards violence and pushing us towards war. For example, here we go. Here's a story out of The Guardian. Headline, Saudis say Iran must, quote, pay the price for alleged plot as U.S. resists retaliation. Again, this is published in The Guardian by, who is it? Ewan McCaskill in The Guardian. Uh, Tehran denies it was behind plot to kill Saudi ambassador and says the U.S. is using it to divert attention from problems at home. That sounds like a pretty good assessment, actually. Uh, Iran may be exactly right on this particular analysis. Again, I, I'm not, I don't agree with the Iranian government and all their policies and so on, but they could very well be, a right, be right with this particular analysis. So we're going to learn more about that tonight as we go into the InfoWars nightly news at 7 p.m.